this is Brittany from Just Be Crafty. This video is part one of a three-part series on how to make this beautiful knit velvet sweater. I'm going to break this pattern up step-by-step step and knit right along with you. As I mentioned, the tutorial will be broken up into three parts. Part one, or today's video, we will cover how to make the front and back sweater panels. In part two, we'll make the sleeves, and in part three, we'll seam all the pieces together. I'm describing the difficulty of this project as an advanced beginner and higher and assumes you already know the following skills. Casting on, the knit stitch, the knit two stitches together decrease, the slip slip knit decrease, though I do show you a slow down visual of this, so if you're unsure on how to do that, I do show you how to do this in the pattern. Purling and casting off. Once you've mastered all those skills, I'm confident you can tackle this pattern. This pattern is written for multiple sizes, so depending on the sweater size you are knitting, it will alter your stitch counts for casting on and decreasing. And because of this, it's important that you follow along with the written pattern as you watch the video. The written pattern is available for free viewing on my blog, or you can grab the ad-free printable version available for purchase in my Etsy shop. I'll have both pattern versions linked in the description box below. For the complete list of materials, please see the link in the description box below or reference your written pattern. The yarn I am using is Lion Brand Velux in color Lilac. And before we jump in, I want to take the time to invite you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and to hit the bell so you never miss a new project. With all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. To begin, grab your smaller set of circular knitting needles and cast on the amount of stitches that the pattern dictates for your specific size. I am making an extra large, so I will be casting on 79 stitches. As you're casting on, do keep in mind that this is the bottom of your sweater, and the sweater is designed to have a nice, loose, relaxed fit. So you don't wanna cast on your stitches too tightly. Make sure that they're a little bit loose and there's a little bit of give to them because that's the bottom of your sweater and you don't want that to be too tight. At this point, we have all of our stitches casted onto our circular knitting needles. Remember, that will differ depending on the size that you're making. And if your cast on tail is really long, you can go ahead and trim it so that there is about six inches or so, just to make sure you have enough tail to weave in later. We're going to begin our first row by doing a knit one, purl one rib. So you're going to start by knitting into your first stitch and purling into the second stitch. Knit into the next stitch, purl into the next stitch. So you're going to repeat, knit one, purl one, until you get to the end of the row. We're going to be working ribbing for the first two inches of our project. So if you'd like, go ahead, pause here, and meet back up with me once you've completed your knit one, purl one for the rest of the row. All right, so now we're on to our last couple stitches. I'm on my very last stitch, which is ending with a knit one. And now we're ready to begin row two. So you're gonna flip over your knitting needle and we're going to begin row two. Now, instead of starting with a knit, we're going to start with a purl. So for row two, you're going to purl one and knit one. Purl one and knit one. 
Keep repeating the repeat of purl one, knit one until you get to the end of the row. The first two inches of our project will be this one by one ribbing. So you're going to keep repeating rows one and two until you have about two inches of ribbing. And you're going to want to end after completing an even row. So that you want to end after completing a purl one, knit one row. If you'd like, pause here and meet back up with me once you've completed two inches of one by one ribbing, ending after completing a purl one knit one row. Once you've completed your last ribbing row, you're going to take your larger set of circular needles and you're going to knit across the row using your larger set of needles. As you go, you'll be knitting each stitch onto the larger set of knitting needles. As you can see, I'm almost done with my first knit row. This is the first row of the body of the sweater. And we're just knitting off of our smaller needle onto our larger needle. I just completed my last stitch and now I'm ready to begin row two of the body of my sweater. And now the entire work is on my larger set of circular needles. So for this row, we are going to purl in every stitch across the row. At this point, we're going to start to be able to distinguish between the front and the back of our work. For all the front rows of our work, we're going to be working the knit stitch. Whenever we're on the back of our work, we're going to be working the purl stitch. When you work the knit stitch on the front of your work and the purl stitch on the back of your work, it creates the stock in it stitch. At this point, you're going to want to peek back at your pattern because depending on what size you're making, that will dictate how long you work in stock in it stitch. So I am working the extra large size. So I will work up until my entire piece measures to be 18 inches before moving on to the neckline. If you're working a smaller size, it will be a smaller measurement. If you're working a larger size, it will obviously be a larger measurement. So make sure you check back at your pattern and find your number and work in stock in it stitch up until you get to your designated number. If you like, pause here and meet back up with me until you're ready. At this point, you should have reached your designated measurement for your specific size, and I ended after completing a purl row. So if you did not end on a purl row, go ahead real quick and do a purl row, and then we can start shaping the neckline. Now go ahead and grab one of your stitch markers and we're going to mark the exact center stitch of our work. Be sure to reference back to the pattern here so you know exactly how many stitches to count in to mark the center stitch. So if you don't have a stitch marker, you can use a bobby pin or even a piece of yarn. So now for this next row, we are going to knit into each stitch up until we get to that stitch marker. And as a quick reminder, remember that number of stitches will be different depending on the size that we're making. I am making an extra large, so this number for me will be 39 stitches on either side of the stitch marker. All right, so I'm almost at my stitch marker and now I am there and I'm going to bind off this stitch. So we're going to knit into that stitch and then we're going to knit into the next stitch and then we're going to slide that stitch markered stitch up and over the last stitch we just made. 
and that just bound off the center stitch marking the center of the V of our neckline. So now you can take off your stitch marker and place it just before the last stitch on your knitting needle to represent the middle of the neckline. Keep working and knit stitch until you get to the end of the row. Okay, so I'm almost to the end of my row. And now we're going to turn our work and we're going to purl our way back up until the stitch marker. And we're actually going to be working back and forth in rows up until that center, that center spot. So we're going to be working the right and left necklines separately. So right now we are working on the left side of our neckline. So you're going to purl into each stitch up until we get to that stitch marker. I'm almost there. Now I've just uh, purled my last stitch and I'm actually going to remove the stitch marker. You can keep it there, um, but starting now you're going to be able to easily tell where you turn your work because we're going to start decreasing and the space will start getting larger. We're now going to work a decrease row. You're going to slip the first stitch, don't knit into it, and then you're going to knit the next two stitches together. So see how that creates like a little hole? And now you're going to knit into each stitch across the rest of the row. All right, so I completed knitting across the rest of that row, and now we're going to purl into each stitch up until we get to the center. And as we're pulling our way back, you can see that gap there. That's where I know I need to turn. Now I'm going to turn my work and we're gonna work our way back across the row by knitting into each stitch. So I'm just going to knit in each of those stitches across the rest of the row. And as you can see, we're not decreasing in every neckline row. We do a decrease row then, which is followed by a purl row, another knit row, and then a purl row, and then we decrease again. So after this knit row, we're going to purl one more row, and then we'll work another decrease. So if you'd like, go ahead, pause here, and meet back up with me once you have knitted across this row. All right, so I'm almost done knitting this row. Just have a few more stitches left. Now I'm going to turn my work and we're just going to purl up until we get to that center space. I'm just about at that center space. I just purled my last stitch and now we're ready to do another decrease row. So to start our decrease row, we're going to slip our first stitch off knit wise. We're going to knit the next two stitches together. That's our decrease. And now we're going to knit into each stitch across the rest of the row. So as you can see, that space, that neckline V line is really starting to form. From this point on, you're going to follow the repeats of decrease row, followed by a purl row, a knit row, another purl row, and then another decrease row. At this point, you'll want to reference back to the pattern to see how many decrease repeats you need to complete before moving on. Go ahead, pause here, and meet back up with me once you're ready to move on. Your last row should be your last decrease knit row. All right, so at this point, you should have just completed your last knitted decrease row. Depending on the size you're making, that will determine how many stitches you have left on your needle for that particular side. I have, for my size that I'm making, I have 31 stitches. Now I'm going to turn my work and purl my way back across. Once again, pause here and meet back up with me once you have purled across the row.
All right, so now we're ready to bind off. We're going to begin by knitting the first two stitches. Then you're going to slide the first stitch up and over the last stitch on your knitting needle. And you're just going to keep repeating that process. Knit one, slide that first stitch up and over and off your knitting needle. Knit that next stitch, slide the first stitch up and over that second stitch and off of your knitting needle. And as you're binding off, you want to make sure that you're doing this loosely. Every time you have two of your stitches knitted onto your knitting needle, like right here, pull up on your knitting needle to kind of loosen those stitches and then bind off. You really don't want to do these too tight, otherwise the top of your sweater will be too tight. So make sure you're binding off loosely. If you're noticing that your bind off is really, really tight, go ahead and grab yourself a larger knitting needle and bind off with larger knitting needles instead of the size that you currently are using. I'm at my last couple stitches of binding off. I'm just sliding that first stitch up and over that second stitch and off my needle. And now I am binding off my last stitch. Now I can go ahead and cut my yarn. And I'm just going to pull that tail through that last loop. And then pull tight to secure. And yay, we've just done the left side of our sweater v-neck, and now we're ready to move on to the right side. Slide your live stitches down to the edge of your knitting needle. On this end of our work, we're not attached to a yarn ball. So to start, you want to grab your other knitting needle and Insert it into the first stitch like you are to knit. Grab your working yarn and just loop it around your knitting needle and begin knitting like normal. So we're going to knit in each stitch across the row up until we get to the last three stitches. All right, so I'm at my last three stitches and we're going to do a decrease. So I'm slowing this down for you just so you can see exactly what I'm doing. You're going to insert your needle into the two stitches as if you are to knit them together. But don't knit into them, just slide them off onto your other needle. Take your working needle and slide into those stitches from left to right. Wrap your working yarn around your back needle and then take your back needle and slide the stitch up and onto your needle. You'll then knit into the last stitch. That decrease is called an SSK, otherwise known as a slip slip knit, and slants towards the right, while a knit two together decrease slants towards the left. We're now going to purl in each stitch across the row. Okay, so I've just finished purling across the row and now I'm ready to knit in every stitch across this row. So I'm just going to knit. This is not going to be a decrease row. We're just knitting in each stitch across the row. I reached the end of my knit row and now I am going to turn my work and purl my way back. So we're going to purl into each stitch across this row. All right, I've just finished purling across the row and now this is my next decrease row. So I'm going to knit into every stitch until I get to the last three stitches.
All right, so now I'm at my last three stitches and I'm going to do another SSK. So I'm going to insert my hook into the next two stitches as if I'm going to knit them, but I'm not. I'm going to just slide them off onto my other knitting needle. I'm going to take my working needle and slide from left to right, and then complete my knit stitch as normal. Then knit the last stitch. So now you can really see the v-neck starting to be formed on the other side as well. From here on out, we're going to be following in the same repeat fashion that we did for the other side. So we just did a decrease row, so the next row will be purl, the row after that will be knit, another purl row, and then another decrease row. Keep following that same repeat pattern until you reach the amount of stitches that are supposed to be remaining on your needles, which will be the same on the other side. Refer back to your pattern to make sure you end up with the right amount of stitches. Once again, I'm making it extra large, so I will be doing these repeats until I have 31 stitches onto my needle. Once I have done my last knitted decrease row, which will be a knit row, we're going to do a row of purl, so, and then turn your work, and then we are going to bind off. All right, so we've just done our last decrease row and we're ready to bind off. You want to do this exactly the same like you did for the other side. You want to bind off each stitch and make sure you're doing it loosely. You do not want this to be too tight. When you lay this down, you want to make sure that it lies flat and that it doesn't bunch at the top or otherwise your shoulders will be bunchy. So do this loosely. If you'd like, go ahead, pause here and meet back up with me once you have bound off the right side of your neckline shaping. All right, I'm almost done. I am just finishing up my last few bind off stitches. One more. Yay, I've just bound off my last stitch. So from here I can cut my yarn. And then I'm just going to pull that tail through the loop on my uh, needle and I'm going to pull that tight to secure it. Now our front panel is done. How exciting is that? Yay! Hooray, hooray, hooray. And just marvel at all of your hard work. Feel the squish in that knitted piece that you just worked so hard to make. I am so proud of you and trust me, I am so proud of myself for finishing that. So now it is time to work on the back panel after you're done marveling at your work. Okay, so now that we're done with our front panel, it's time to work on the back panel. You're going to start exactly how you did for the front panel with the same amount of cast on stitches followed by two inches of ribbing and you're going to knit and stock knit stitch up until the measured amount that the pattern says for your specific size. Just note that the back of the sweater is a little bit longer than the front of the sweater, so your back panel will be just a tad longer than your front panel. Once again, pause here and meet back up with me once you have knitted up to your designated measurement and end after completing a purled row. All right, so now I've just completed my last purl row and I am almost done with my back panel and am ready to bind off. So just as we did for our front panel, as we bind off, we wanna make sure that we're doing this loosely. You want the top to be able to lie flat and have a little bit of give to it and not be squished together and bunchy. So to do that, you need to make sure that you are binding off loosely. I'm binding off my last couple stitches. Now this is my last one. So I'll slide that up and over that stitch. And now I have just completed bind off. We can cut our yarn tail and take the tail and pull it through the loop that was on our needle and pull tight to secure. And there you have it, there is the back panel. Now at this point you should have completed your front and back panel and now you're ready to move on to making the sleeves. 
Stay tuned for part two of this tutorial where we'll go over how to make the sleeves. I really hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, be sure to give the video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe so you never miss a new tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.